Our guest today is the one and only Matt Willis. From playing bass and busted and being crowned King of the Jungle to starring on the West End stage and the big screen, Matt is one of Britain's best loved musicians, presenters and actors. He's here to share his incredible journey from addiction to recovery and beyond, including the power of positive rebellion and human connection, his strategies for overcoming imposter syndrome and why we should all be stepping out of our comfort zone. So Matt, thanks so much for joining me today. Thanks for having me. I'm really excited. It's nice in here. Yeah, it is nice. Yeah, yeah. it's nice. nice and cozy. It. Yeah, it's a good vibe. I like it. <laughs> yeah. So it's a rather strange times that we're living in, but even amongst that or against that backdrop, what one thing are you grateful for in your life right now? One thing am I grateful for? Um, I mean, overall, my family. You mm. know, I mean, um, to be quite serious, like, um, like they fill me with so much joy every day yeah. like my I, I, I'm working away at the moment so I'm kind of I'm touring and I'm kind of coming back and I normally have I get home on like a Sunday afternoon I have the rest of the day Sunday then I drop in school Monday then I go off again so um that little brief period of time I have with them is just brilliant yeah you know, I really cherish it so I'm um and they they keep me very grateful amazing mm. so how long have you been a father for now is it 12, 12 years, years. Yeah. yeah my eldest is 13 in yeah. june okay yeah which is mad yeah i can't quite believe that <laughs> she's going to be um she's going to be 13 in june wow <laughs> yeah and yeah. would you say that you you know since you were young knew you were going to be a father always wanted to be a father or was it a, a different kind of journey towards that um it's the only thing i ever wanted to be really brilliant like when i think about when i was a kid the only thing yeah. i knew i wanted to be was a dad Okay. You know, I kind of um, I always pictured myself being a being a father. You know, I had a bit, a bit of a strange kind of family upbringing. I kind of um, and um, and that's just the way it was, and that that, that that's that. And um, but I always kind of went, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna be, you know. And yeah. I kind of um, I always really, really wanted it. You know, I didn't necessarily think it was gonna happen for me for many years. Like when it happened, I was really yeah. surprised. I was kind of quite um, quite shocked. I was 26, and I kind of found out. Um, that Emma was pregnant and I was a bit like oh I wasn't uh, this I'm not ready this yeah. is not why this is in 10 years time you know yeah. that kind of thing yeah. happens but um but um but no I'm I'm super glad it did and it's been the most incredible thing for me that's amazing yeah it made me pick up on on the maybe the transformative nature of becoming a father and yeah and the husband but later on but what else is going well in your life right now what else is good for you um I feel I feel like lots of things are going well. I can I can very quickly turn on that. You know, like yeah. I, I can I can I can catastrophize things quite quickly yeah. and I have to really kind of focus on not doing that. You know, um um and for me that's keeping everything very much in the day. You know, which is something I learned through recovery and it's kind of like um a day at a time and when I focus on today everything's great. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when I start to think about 5 years or so, uh, things go a bit squiffy for me. So I kind of um I try not to do that. I kind of um um, but then even when I think of the next year, like I've got a good year ahead of me, like I'm kind of quite, um, I'm happy and content, like things are things are going well, things are exactly where I want them to be. You know, I mean, of course, things could be better and you can always mm. think like that. But actually, when I think about it, things are pretty good. I'm okay. What role does like challenging yourself to do new things play in that for you? Um, I, I'm always trying something new. Yeah. Um, I'm kind of one of those guys that my, my, my wife um, literally rolls her eyes now yeah. at the things that I become a little bit obsessed with quite quickly. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, but I love that. I love finding out everything about something, mm. you know. Or as much I'm, I'm kind of um, I'm a uh, I'm into everything, but a master of none of them. You know, it's yeah. kind of like yeah. um, I just kind of like to learn and kind of like to find out what's this about, what's this, what's this, what's this. Yeah. You know, so um, I'm constantly kind of trying to challenge myself with something that seems brand new and different you know and i really i really enjoy that yeah. you know um and some things stick some things don't you know but that's okay i'm kind of cool with that you know and i find out well that's not actually not for me <laughs> or that's becoming really obsessive or maybe need to calm down with that a little <laughs> sure, bit you know sure. like um all these kind of things but um but I, I love finding out new stuff i kind of um i recently bought some recording equipment mm. um, so i've never been into tech yeah like i, I play bass to my level and i stick at that and it's yeah. kind of like that's always what i've done musically and i write songs on acoustic guitar and i take them to the band and we build them into a track you mm -hmm. know and then the producer does everything um but recently i've been like um i've been you know meeting lots of 
songwriters and different people and kind of things and their and their ability to make something sound like a record yeah. almost instantly mesmerizes me i'm like i need to i need to know that you know so um and i've never been very musical so i'm kind of trying to learn music theory as well at mm. the same time which is um which is a whole different ball game you know kind of um, and it doesn't really interest me which is yeah which i find quite challenging because i don't really want to know this but yeah. i feel like i need to you know like um it kind of feeds into that which i'm sure we're going to talk about yeah. imposter syndrome that kind of like being a musician who doesn't really know music mm -hmm. you know i'm like oh i should really probably know something about this what notes are in a chord and what chord tones are yeah, on, all sure. those things you know so um, I, I feel like um um i'm kind of getting into that at the moment which is um which is a brand new challenge and mm. causing me lots of um mind melting anxiety at times but um <laughs> but it's um but i'm dealing with it slowly yeah. I can relate a lot of what you you share there. I mean, I think curiosity is a is a great trait to have and explore yeah. new things and try new things. There's another side to that which, to me, feels important around like I think we we're born with innate gifts and capacities and qualities, mm. etc. That are almost clues to like our path in life. Yeah, and then we sometimes feel, oh, but I need to I need to get good at this as well and that as well and that as well, but. They might, I mean, um, this is just something I'm posing to you. They might just be, it's like the flip side of the coin. By having that one strength, the mm. flip side is that, fine, you don't have that the capacity there, but that's not what your true calling is. And I just wonder what that, how that lands with you. Yeah, I think you're so right. You know, I think, um, like, for, for such a long time, I, I really struggled with um, with music. Like, mm. um, I, was, I was really good at coming up with concepts and song ideas and kind of bits and 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 especially with lyrical ideas like that was kind of my strength and i was like well that's what i do yeah you know but when it came to kind of the musicality of things i struggled so i kind of just didn't really push myself yeah. in that area and i kind of felt like oh well i do my thing you know and and slowly but surely i've been going well i, I think i've got something there but i feel maybe too scared to mm. to bring that up because that's not my area of expertise when sure. actually um, I'm a songwriter, so it is my area of expertise. I'm just, I'm just a bit shy about it, you know. And I'm like, so I'm trying to kind of push myself into being a bit more, um, being a bit more um, upfront with my ideas and kind mm. of like, and just, you know, there is no such thing as a bad idea. You know, sometimes they don't work, you know, but they're still worth pursuing and still worth saying and still worth kind of going for it. And sometimes the ones that you think aren't very good end up being great. You know, also, you know, I just, I just, I just tend to kind of come out with them now and kind of go for it and stop being so fearful about yeah. things. You know, yeah. I mean, mm. you mentioned imposter syndrome earlier, and, and mm. I think when you're in that state of mind, you often censor yourself, don't yeah, you? Yeah, very much so. Very much so. Don't get, you know, I think, and it's, it's, um, for me, it's quite a British thing. It's like don't mm. have ideas above your station. You know, you're this. You know, don't don't get outside your box. You know that kind of thing. You yeah. know, like don't get too ahead of yourself. You know, when really everything that's happened in my life has been outside of my comfort zone and and yeah. and, and ideas way above my station. You know, so like um, it's um and and it seems to have gone well. You know, so yeah. it's kind of um, but I still I struggle with that so much on a daily basis. That kind of imposter syndrome. I kind of um and I still battle that. You know, I kind of still feel like you know someone's going to knock on the door and go yeah. all right mate your time's up you know you've had, you've had your you've had your luck you know um you you found out you know and um and i've really kind of um and i felt that for such a long time but um and the 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 the, the interesting thing was is, is working in acting now and kind of working with different actors i always felt that because i was uh, from a pop group and i kind of um and um and I, I, I wasn't going to be taken seriously yeah. and no one and you know and I kind of always had that um, so I had to work really hard so when I walked in the room I knew everything even though other people didn't you know I was like I'm going to know everything and um, because they, I can't bear the thought of them not thinking I'm very good Yeah. When um, and then the more I talk to other actors they all feel like that all of us you know yeah. we all feel like we're out of our depth that we don't know what we're doing and we're kind of like just winging it you know and um, and that's and then I talk to other people from different industries and everyone feels the same. So it's a kind of a, yeah. well, not everyone, but like most, some people I speak to, it's kind of seems like a much bigger thing than just me, Definitely. which was so nice to feel, you know, I was like, oh, other people go through this and I still feel like it. You yeah. Know, I still come up against this um, sometimes daily, you know, but um, um, sometimes it could be in the middle of a scene. Like we'll be in, in the show I'm in at the moment and we'll be in the middle of a scene. I'll hear someone 
in the audience cough or something and I'll think, oh no, they think I'm terrible. I'm like, I'm instantly, you mm. know, in this, and, and it stops me from being free. It stops everything from happening. It's kind of like this constant little monkey on my shoulder who whispers in my ear, you know, and, um, and um, I've found ways to kind of deal with that a little bit better. You know, I've kind of ways to kind of, to kind of shut him up in a way or kind of acknowledge that it's there and kind yeah. of go, it's okay. You know, I've got this thing where I've got these, um, when that's happening, the headlights are on me, you know, the lights are on me yeah. and, um, and it's all me, 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 me. When in fact I'm on stage with a partner and with other people. And if I turn those headlights onto them and I focus on them, one, it makes me a better actor and it makes the scene go better. And two, it takes that away from me and makes it about the process rather than me being good. Exactly. You know, I think that is almost the, the secret to overcoming some of that kind of anxiety around one's performance, how am I being perceived, how am I mm. going to do, is is just to shift the focus of attention from on oneself to outwards. And it just yeah. changes everything, doesn't it? Yeah, completely. Like, um, like I did um, I did two years at uh, drama school and it was um, a Meisner course. Like Meisner's mm. a technique of acting and it's all about, it's all about your partner. It's all about um, um, putting all your emphasis and all your focus on your partner and feeding off there and reacting off them. And it was the most transformative thing for me because now I've got that. And yeah. um, and before then, I was always thinking about when the line was coming out, I was thinking about how it was coming out, how I'm going to say the next thing, what's coming up, you know, whereas now I'm just reacting solely off what they're doing. And it makes me, it's so much more comfortable yeah. for me and it kind of makes me feel like I'm in the process. And I don't judge myself too much now when I walk off stage. Like I, there was times I'd walk off stage and be like, ah, ah, you know, like yeah. this. I don't feel that anymore. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And I've always got tomorrow. What's great about someone like you talking about this is that it's, I think it's probably comforting for people. It's, it normalizes what you've already suggested is such a common human experience. And mm. especially if, if people hear people they perceive are, have have got it all, you know, got it all made, etc. succeeding in life, but, but they're still experiencing these kinds of thoughts about themselves. I, th I think it is encouraging, it's, it's comforting yeah. to know that you're not alone. Um, however, you've shared some, I guess, strategies or techniques that you've used, and one sounds like, you know, your spotlight moving from there to there. Yeah. You mentioned potentially like silencing the thoughts, but I know that that, can sometimes be impossible. Yeah. So would you say your relationship with the thoughts has changed? Um, yeah, definitely. I think that's the that's the that's the thing. I can't yeah. silence them. I can't shut them up. And when I try, they become overbearing. Yeah. So um, actually, that never worked. Like me trying to shut them up or silence them or say no, it's fine. You're yeah. great. You're amazing. You know, all that kind of inner talk thing didn't really work for me. Sure. Like I found that it just um, I was just pretending that, and really, it was kind of like you're not really. Yeah, you know that yeah. little thing was just whispering. You can you can stand in the Superman pose however long you want, but you're not really. Yeah. You know, so it was um, uh, it didn't really work for me. Yeah. You know, whereas um, whereas I found that you know acknowledging that and going, I know what that is. I know what that is, and I've done this before, mm. and I've got through it, and I know what I know what's happening right now, and it's okay, and I know you're there, and I know yeah. what I know, that, and I'm I'm I acknowledge that, but I try not to let it lead. Mm. You know, I try to kind of take control of the steering wheel a little bit, you know, and kind of go, okay, you're there. I understand you're there. You won't be there forever. You know, yeah. I'm going to carry on with what I'm doing and I'm going to just kind of like make the most of what I can do, you know. And, it's, yeah. um, and that's that that seems to work for me, you know, and it seems to kind of be what well, seems to be working right now. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that that sounds like mindfulness in action. Is that something that you've, that you practice? Yeah, very much so. Yeah. yeah. Like, um, like daily I have, I have different types of mindfulness, which I practice. Like, um, um, I'm, 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 I meditate regularly. Yeah. I kind of, um, um, I go in and out of kind of, um, routines with that. And I've tried different kind of ways of kind of making that a definite part of my life. Like in it kind of, um, and when things like that are involved in my day, they seem to go better. Yeah. You know, um, I've recently started working with, um, um, it's, uh, I've got no affiliation with this, but it's called a sensei. It's like a little yeah, buzzer. That says, oh, have you really? All yeah. oh, right, great. Amazing. <laughs> it's, it's incredible. It's amazing. And like, um, and it, it kind of feels like in some ways with meditation, I can sit down and I can do it. And I'm going through the motions and it's like, I haven't done anything, mm. you know, whereas with, with the sensei, which is a, a buzzer that sits on your chest and it resonates on your, on your chest bone. And, um, and this music plays and I control my breathing. 
whatever happens, even if my thoughts are racing, it's done something. Mm. You know, like I've I've achieved something in those ten minutes. Like and I, and I turn it off, and I've there's no there's no kind of like oh you didn't do that yeah. properly. There's just like it happened, and I did yeah. that, and it and it and it seems to work. So that is something which I think is um is really working for me at the moment. And I do that before every performance at the moment. Amazing. You know, after I finish a vocal warm up, I sit there for ten minutes with that thing on my chest, and it really seems to kind of kind of control my nerves a little bit and kind of control my my mind from racing definitely mm. it's like just helping to activate the your parasympathetic nervous system which yeah. is that like rest and digest the calm the grounded which is perfect for being able to then go on stage and come from that place of presence yeah whereas when we in the like sort of hyper aroused sympathetic nervous system thing which is you know stress yeah it's just so difficult then that's when the thoughts are racing and it's just far more difficult to be in control of how one is showing up and engaging and responding uh, exactly exactly and the character i'm playing right now is a nervous man oh, okay. like he's a nervous erratic kind of like um scatty kind of like yeah. um guy you know so if i come on with all that for sure it can be re it can really be too much and i can i can i can go too far with it but if i come on with a place of calm i know who the character is i know who this guy mm. is i've worked on him I know who he is, but if I go into that with calm, Definitely. I can add all these elements on top and it becomes yeah. much more Like inten effective. intentional scattiness. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah completely. So, I mean, it's it's wonderful to hear that things are going so well. Um, you know, you mentioned earlier having gone through recovery, so obviously there have mm. been a, times in your life where there was struggle. Mm. Um, yeah, would you just tell us a bit about that? Yeah, definitely. I think I've been... Um, I've been... Um, in recovery on and off since I was about 21. Mm -hmm. I kind of, um, I've always been, um, I always felt uncomfortable in my own skin. I always felt less than, you know, I always felt like, um, you know, this kind of imposter syndrome thing feeds into yeah. it a little bit. I always felt like I was kind of, um, I was just blagging it and I wasn't worth anything. And that's kind of, you know, all these kind of things kind of were a day to day battle with me. And then, um, and um and I especially found it tough in any kind of social situation. I felt really uncomfortable when there was people around on on just like chatting like this would never have happened. Yeah. Like I could never be in any kind of situation like this. And um and I found that when I had a drink or a smoke or a drug, that went away and I became this different guy. And I loved that. You know, and it and it and it worked really well. And um and um and through my kind of like late teens and early twenties, that was very much the way I dealt with life, you know, on a day to day basis. It was kind of like, um, it was my cure for yeah. my, my kind of torment and my trauma in a way, you know, it kind of, and for many years it worked, you know, well, I thought it was working, you know, and, um, and then after a while it became apparent that it was no longer working and it was actually causing me many more problems than I could ever have possibly imagined and um and um and i kind of uh and i tried many different ways to, to stop i i i went to different rehab centers i went to different therapists i went to different places i kind of took different drugs to get off certain drugs mm -hmm. and all these kind of things i tried and, and nothing seemed to work you know and um and uh and it took me years and years and years to kind of to kind of break that cycle and at points it got really really bad and i kind of um and I think the last the last drink I had was about four weeks before my wedding day, and um, and I kind of um, and I knew I wasn't going to turn up to the wedding. I knew I'd be too wrecked. I knew I wouldn't be able to walk, you know, see a walk down the aisle. I knew I wouldn't be that guy. And if I was there, I'd let everyone down by the ceremony being over. You know, after that, it would just be a mess. And I, I knew that was going to happen. And um, and I knew I had to do something. So I. I I finally I gave in you know and I kind of asked for help um and um and I and it was the it was the best thing I ever did you know kind of asking someone and actually being brutally honest about where I was because I always hid things I always didn't tell anyone how bad it was many people knew you know my wife now she knew exactly what was going on well she she used to keep a diary of stuff that I was doing, you know, I didn't know that at the time, but like, um, and and she showed me that at times, and that was, that's only half of what I was actually doing, <laughs> you know, so it was, um, you know, I mean, a lot of people knew, but until I'd actually asked for help, the help that I was offered wasn't helping, you know, and when I actually asked, and I actually surrendered, and I was like, I, 
this is uncontrollable. I cannot control this by mm. myself. I cannot deal with this by myself. I need help. And um and I was given it, you know, and um and freely, you know, a lot of the time. You know, I went to a, a treatment centre and um uh in Bournemouth and I was sat in a room with people that if they weren't there, they were going to jail or they were coming straight from jail there. And there was a lot of people in there from many different backgrounds. And I was suddenly like, oh, this is where I am. This is me. Yeah. This is, this is, and I'm not going, I'm not as bad as you. I've done exactly the same as you, you know, and I'm relate to everything you're saying. You know, I haven't been put to jail, you know, but I probably will, yeah. you know, if I carry on the way I'm going. And, um, and it was, um, and it was an amazing experience. I took advice. I did everything they said. Um, and I wanted it, you know, and, um, and I came out of there, I got married, I was sober on my wedding day. Um, I had the strangest wedding known to man <laughs> because I, just, I felt so uncomfortable and weird to be there and it just felt like, a, yeah. to be honest, it was probably the worst thing to do coming out of rehab and two days later getting married. Sure. But, um, but it was, um, it, you know, I did it and I did that and, um, and then, then I relapsed again about six mm. months later and, um, and that carried on for a little while, you know, and I kind of kept on this spiral of relapse and getting yeah. back into recovery and relapse and getting back into recovery. And every time I went back in, they opened their arms and, and took me back in. There was mm. no shame. There was no, there was no, um, um, there was no disappointment. It was just yeah. part of life, you know, part of being in recovery, you know, and especially in the early days, that was my, my story. I know lots of people's stories aren't like that. They go in yeah. and they're clean and it's fine. But for me, that definitely wasn't the case. And since then I, had eight years and then I relapsed again after eight years and it was um then that was another four months and it was um so it's been um it's been an ongoing thing in my life and I think I found lots of ways to kind of to deal with that and lots of things that have helped me along the way and some things help for a while and then they don't and I try new things you know and um and I think that's what's what intrigues me so much about it is that there are different ways there are yeah. different things there are there are things that can help you which you'd be surprised by you know like mindfulness is really helping me you know kind of silencing those demons a little yeah. bit you know and um and a lot of different things help me like um planning my day out really helps me you know like um if i don't have a plan or i don't have a schedule i can mm -hmm. go my mind can go all over the place and i don't want to i don't want to drink or use today but before i know it that might happen yeah so I um, I put in action pretty much every day to make sure that that doesn't creep back in. Hmm. Hmm. And I know you've spoken about mindfulness. So you, you say you put in action every day. What? How do you um, describe through, the most powerful things for you? Um, first of all, like the thing is, I, I think addiction is is something which I think we have um, in this country. We're getting a bit better at it, but I think it's been so. Um, we demonize addiction. Yeah. We we think of it as a real kind of less than thing. Mm. It's like um, it's what drug addicts do yeah. and those scumbags who rob purses and things. You know, which is um, which is true. But those people are in pain. They're not choosing that life. That life has chosen them. You know, like it hasn't chosen them. They that that is, you know, in some ways, I think that addiction is is a way for someone to deal with trauma yeah you know it's a way for someone to kind of um to kind of deal with trauma on a day-to-day -day basis and for me it was a solution to my yeah to my trauma and it kind of helped me for a while and then they say first it giveth then it taketh away you know like mm. and for me that was my experience mm. but then um i think we've kind of got into a a real cycle that we just punish people with addiction and we kind of like you, you know you're an addict so you're yeah. going to go to jail or you're going to be fired or you're going to be this and you're going to be you know taking away your home your livelihood everything like that because you do something which is out of your control and yeah. it really is out of your control i can i tried to control myself yeah. so many times on my own i couldn't you know but um i think if we look at it much more through a compassionate eye you know and and say look this is this is actually something that has happened to you rather than you're doing mm -hmm. you know we can really kind of like learn to help people and the, and and that's only going to benefit society and benefit everybody yeah. by doing that you know so i think we've um we're starting to look at that differently i think people are starting to change their thought patterns on that but i think it's um it's uh it's still you know i mean like if you if if i say i'm an addict to someone they go no you're not mm -hmm. but like, i am i say that to remind myself in some sure. way what i have 
been through to become the man I am today, you know. And so I'm, I do say that I am an addict, but I am so much more than that as well. Yeah, of course. Um, addiction happens to anybody. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't, um, it doesn't pick, you know, it's not like, well, you're this guy, so you're going to get it. You know, I know people that you would not believe, you know, they've got everything and they've had the perfect life and mm. all this kind of stuff. It doesn't have to be, you don't have to come from the obvious side of trauma, you know, like um, that trauma can come up in, in different, um, that, without saying too much, I think that trauma is the missing piece. I think that we're, we're we, you know, we don't necessarily talk too much about pain Mm -hmm. and where that comes from and how to heal that to be able to get to the to get to the recovery stage yeah. you know and i think um you know in in a 12 step addiction there are times when you look at these things but it's not really mentioned that much and i think um i think that's something which we're overlooking and i i think anything we can do to kind of resolve that i think is for, yeah, for, for the better well like you say like approach with an open mind and open heart and like compassion, you know, anything short of that is is not the right approach. You know, yeah. any judgment, any stigma is just reinforcing the the underlying yeah. emotions and feelings anyway, which is, yeah. is not great. Yeah. Um, and I think, however, it's approach. I think it's helping someone to love themselves again. Yeah, I think that's exactly yeah. it. You know, I think. Um, and how can we love before we love ourselves? You know, which, yeah. is, which is such a big thing, which took me a long time to kind of get used to. Because so I was like, love yourself. That's against what I mm. think I, I should do. You know, like that's kind of like you don't love yourself. Don't you love? He loves himself. You know, that kind of thing. Yeah. You know? yeah. And it was kind of like, oh, you know, but like, yeah. but really, that's true. Until you know, until you learn to love who you are, how can you possibly mm. help anybody or, lo or truly love anybody else? You exactly. know. So it's a, I think that's a big thing, and I think. Um, I think community is is so underrated when it comes to these things. I think having, you know, a sense of belonging, having a sense of purpose, having something to get out of bed for every day, you yeah. know, because why else would you? Why not just use, mm. you know, because that's easy. You know, life is difficult, yeah. especially when you've got no purpose or no reason to live, yeah. you know. So it's, um, and I think building community and building connection with other humans is so integral and so massive Definitely. and i think that that's something which i think you know and that, that back to 12 steps that's what we that's what that is it's a fellowhood of of men and women who mm -hmm. come together for something there's something really magical in that which i think is um um i think in in today's society which is kind of set up for addiction in a lot of ways you look at everything with yeah. bed and 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 look at it's all it's all to stimulate you to to stimulate dopamine to yeah, kind of like yeah. get you on that train to kind of want more to want more you know and it's um and 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 it's losing that human connection it's losing that kind of like this mm -hmm. interaction you know mm -hmm. which i think is so important i think we're really kind of missing yeah you know and um and i i, I can find that when i'm away like when i'm away if i'm if i finish a show i go to my hotel room on my own before i know it i can start to feel a little bit mm -hmm. you know because um you know, I, I miss that. You know, I miss the human interaction. I miss that community. I miss that connection. For sure. Yeah, I think that connection piece is so important, isn't it? Like, mm. it's connection with self, connection with others, connection with life. And when we don't feel those things, we try and sometimes fill those voids, as it were. And, exactly, yeah. exactly. I always used to say it's like I had a huge hole that I tried to yeah. shove things in. Like, maybe this will work. Yeah. Maybe this will work. Maybe I'll take this and that will fill that hole for a little while. Sometimes maybe it would, but then mm. it will just open bigger. You know, and I think that missing piece is um, is connection. You know, yeah. in some way or form. You know, and um, and I think um, that's what I find that when I'm I'm missing that, my head can go a little bit. Mm. You know, um, it's something which follows me, and I I have to work on it. Mm. You know, but I'm okay with that because I like working on it. Yeah, I really do. I really enjoy working on myself. You know, I really enjoy doing things that are um. And, and and for a while I was like, oh, it's quite selfish, you know. So we've got that in our head as well, I think yeah. sometimes. But actually, without doing these things, if I if I work if I if I work on my mental health through meditation or through exercise or mm. through eating better or all these kind of things, I'm a better husband. I'm a better father. I'm a better performer. I'm a better actor. I'm a better yeah. you know human in 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 the whole. You know, so it's um these things um uh, benefit so many parts of your life and other people's lives definitely yeah so it's, it's resourcing yourself to be able to then give to others and then yeah. there's many metaphors and analogies as the 
overflowing cup, the oxygen mask analogy, but yeah, yeah, they're exactly. All, they're all spot it's on. Really important. They're so yeah. spot on. You know, yeah. I think it's really um, it's really important. I think um, and and sorry, just to go back to connection really quickly. I was kind yeah. of um, I was thinking recently, like um, um, I was very good friends with Amy Winehouse, and when she died, yeah. I kind of um. I realized I kind of went through a really hard patch kind of coming to terms with that because I wasn't very close to her at the end and I kind of had a lot of guilt and shame around that and kind of um and um and I was thinking you know about me when I was at my worst when I was in the band and I was like man I'm I was like I was surrounded by people all the time mm. I was I was I was surrounded by I was playing shows to tens of thousands of people I was like I shouldn't have been so lonely mm -hmm. you know but like um but I was you know and it was um and um and i think you know you look at certain people and you're like they have everything why is that happening to them you know and um and i think it's um you know when it comes to connection i think sometimes a change in your life um that is unrelatable to the people that you love yeah. and that love you can be really hard to connect with them on you know because i didn't want to bring anything that i was going through to people that i grew up with yeah. like my friends became very distant to me because I didn't live the same life to them and I couldn't really relate to them you know so I had a real issue kind of like talking about anything I was going through you know because it's like poor pop star whatever you know like yeah. so I kind of had this I didn't want to burden anybody especially people that I knew were going through real sh stuff you know like I was like you know um I should be I should be cool to you you know but like um you know it was um it's a really weird kind of um it's such a strange Thing that happens when you're young and that kind of thing happens to you like it's kind of undescribable what that mm. life becomes mm. and um and until you till it happens you don't really understand what that's going to be and sometimes it's not what you think it is you know sure. and, um, and it's taken me a long time to kind of go actually it wasn't necessarily um the environment or what was happening to me it was my uncomfortableness in my own skin mm -hmm. and me being uncomfortable being me that was just amplified by the surrounding and the career yeah. that i'd chosen the life that i was then living yeah, yeah. i think so it comes back to that self-acceptance that self-love that self-knowing mm. so i think getting to know oneself is just is really important yeah and do you have as you've mentioned you know your old mates and them your perception being that they wouldn't really understand your life and the things that you were going through mm. did you have close friends within the industry um not really yeah no I, um when i think about it not not really i had people i worked with but i had people that cared about me yeah and i know that now you know but i didn't know that then you know like i thought you know and also there's something within me that didn't want to rock the boat Sure. You know that like the train is moving, the train's earning money. Mm, don't don't mm. step off. Don't yeah. don't don't mess it up. You know, like don't let them in because yeah. they'll find yeah. out, and you might lose it, or you might lose it for all of these people that are earning from it, and all this kind of kind of comes mm. into play. And you don't want to you don't want to let them down. You know, and you know that everyone around you is relying on you being on stage at 9 p.m. Yeah. You know, or you turning up to the TV, or you doing the radio, or you doing it, whatever you're going to be doing. You have to do that. And um and if you and if you don't, then I was always worried that I was gonna be Yeah the reason it ended or yeah. the reason, you know, so I, I I kept everything in. So it takes a lot of courage to go against that and actually then like you say, and I think you, you use the word uh give up and you use the word surrender and ask mm. for help, but it takes a lot of courage to eventually do that. Would you describe it as courageous? Uh it's uh, I think it's really courageous and I think it's the it's the in our in my head i build it up to such a disaster to have to ask for mm. help and to have to mm. own up to what i was doing and where i was and i thought people are going to judge me and people are going to think so lowly of me and you know that like i can't yeah. stop taking this drug and i can't you know i should be able to do this and i can't you know mm. something wrong with me i've got no willpower all these kind of things when you know it, it's not that it's something completely different and it took me a long time to learn what that was but I was so scared to own up to this because of shame. Yeah. And actually, when I did, I was met with nothing but love and kindness. Mm, mm. And and um and it was um and in fact lots of people were like, Thank God you've 
you finally you know we've been waiting for yeah. you know like so um and it was um it was a beautiful experience you know and it's um don't get me wrong it's hard you know that yeah. the next the, the stage after that is difficult too but yeah. it's much it's much easier than drinking and using because yeah. that was in, that was a daily struggle to kind of do that and to hide that and the lying and the, the manipulation all that kind of stuff that goes with that is exhausting mm. you know but then once you kind of go oh okay great now what you know like i can kind of face that and yeah. plus facing it sober is is the only way to do it otherwise yeah. you're never going to be able to really truly face it you know and would you say that you are grateful for your darkest most difficult moments and periods in your life would you say you would you say you're grateful for them yeah yeah, yeah I, 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 it's funny you say that yeah 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 i am very grateful yeah. for them i'm i'm i don't regret anything mm. you know which is really took me a long time to understand because yeah. i regretted everything i was so ashamed and and um and i i thought i'd messed so many things up and ruined so many people's lives and was when actually i i hadn't really and um and and even if i had i was able to make amends with them and yeah. truly say sorry and then to understand me saying sorry and um and to take it and sometimes i took it sometimes i didn't you know but mm. it was um but that's them and i was able to keep my side of the street clean and do me and yeah. then i'm able to live with that you yeah. know and um and so um i am i'm not i'm not ashamed of of that life mm. i'm i'm i am grateful because now i know i'm not sure who i would have been without it because i'm just me but then um um i do believe that that is all making me the person yeah. i am now and i'm quite happy with that guy so it's yeah. kind of like i am grateful for those things it's that beautiful lotus in the mud metaphor i, I love that you know lotus it grows in the mud right and it stays there for a long time in the mud like that's where it gets its source from its nutrients etc and then eventually it breaks through above the water into this beautiful like lotus but wow. can only do that through living in the mud for a while that's it's beautiful a, it's that's a brilliant. lovely metaphor that's fantastic yeah. yeah very much so very much so yeah. you know i feel like i'm still kind of poking my head out of the water right yeah, now yeah. you know it's kind of um well that's great isn't it to kind of feel like you've kind of got like places yeah. to go you know kind yeah. of like it feels really kind of um and um and if those things didn't happen i'd still be happy Definitely. you know which is kind of good you know but um and don't be wrong that's not all the time sometimes i have days where i feel like crap exactly you know like um some days things are rubbish you know like kind of like you know, really yeah have, i can have rubbish days too and bad things happen you know mm. like but i'm able to face them now rather than run away from them exactly you know and run away and kind of push them under the carpet and never deal with them yeah. I'm able to go okay what's this okay that's terrible let's deal with that you yeah know, and kind of like and that's only gonna make it better definitely i mean not not to overdo this metaphor here but like that lotus it doesn't come up to the, the sun and stay there it comes back down into the mud again and then it goes back up oh, you know what I mean? really that kind of wow, wow over great, time so like, and i think we can think of our lives in that way mm. but if we approach our difficulties and our challenges in a way we have like just maybe a surrender sometimes an open mm. heart uh a willingness to this is difficult to do in the moment sometimes but a willingness to learn from the, the dif like difficulties we face that's all the the food for flourishing mm. in our lives and it, yeah. it's not some like state you reach and that's a da da but it's it's more like a spirit an impulse a way of living your life that i think yeah. you can learn through something like addiction and dark times and difficulty yeah you know like uh, i think this comes back exactly like you said it comes back to this too shall pass you know like it's yeah. all, whatever you're going <clears throat> through it will end you Definitely. know like um i remember when i first had my first um my first child like um i was given this advice by somebody and um and like um i was given lots of advice about it. don't let them sleep in your bed don't do this yeah don't do that, all yeah. that kind of advice and um the one piece of advice which was the one piece that really stuck with me and was brilliant was whatever it ha whatever whatever's happening it won't last mm. so if it's bad it won't last yeah but if it's good <laughs> unfortunately <laughs> it won't last exactly but it will move and it will change and that's just life right yeah. kind of like just all you know like i mean even in the last three years what's happened has just been like wow yeah. you know like but you know and even at the worst times you know like there's still kind of like an element of like okay this will pass yeah. we will get somewhere you know yeah mm. for me that makes me think of you know like a lens through which we look at our life or just how we 
encounter life, the good and the bad. But for me, that I've been thinking about this, the thing that gets like the heart of it is is appreciation. Like it's just just appreciation of life, mm. which includes everything. Yeah, you know, an appreciation of self, which includes everything of others, which includes everything. It's it, to come back to that self love thing. You can't if 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 you're trying to seek self love, let's say, and that's the the solution to moving past something like addiction. That can't exclude the the ugly stuff, the bad stuff, the difficult stuff. No. Like self love is is all is everything. It's completely. And if you can bring that kind of yeah. spirit to the whole of life. I think there's something in that. Yeah, yeah, totally. I think we're all kind of um, we're all learning that. I think we're all um guilty of kind of like when like I don't get too much into COVID stuff, but like when yeah. lockdowns were happening, like we were very quickly. I can't wait for things to be back to normal. Like um, after a while, I was like, actually, I don't want to be back to what normal sure. was i want yeah. something different from this you know mm -hmm. that really gave me an element of kind of like sitting down assessing going right what was i what was so great about that you know actually was that great right what do i really want yeah you know yeah. and it really focused me really kind of made me go okay great what actually brings me happiness and what was i doing because i thought other people was thought mm. think it was cool mm. you know and i've tried to stop doing those things yeah you know which has been yeah. something which um which has been great, which has been turning down certain things and kind of not doing other aspects of my life, which I which I enjoyed, but only because I I was doing them because I just wanted someone to go, hey, what up? You yeah. know, like that's yeah. what I wanted. I wanted yeah. someone to appreciate me when really I didn't really love what I was doing, but I wanted people to think it was great. You know, mm. so it's, um, that was um, something which came out of that for me and it's kind of been, and so far it's been great, Yeah, you know. That's just being honest with yourself, I think mm. it's so important. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Sometimes we live out lives that aren't really our own, you know. Exactly, yeah. you know. And I, I think it's really hard to find out the kind of like, you know, your authentic self. Yeah. You know, I don't know what that is. Yeah, sure. I have no idea what <laughs> what that means. So yeah, when yeah, I sure. think about that, I'm like, what's my authentic self? Yeah. I have no idea. Yeah. You know, I'm just going to do stuff I love. And yeah, sure. like, and, and sometimes they work, sometimes they don't, yeah. you know, but when I'm um, like, I, I, I read Matthew McConaughey's book, which I loved, like mm. Greenlight. I Greenlight. thought it was such an incredible book. And he talks a lot about this kind of stuff, you know, like when, when you do stuff, um, you know, like you, he said, look, I've got nothing against money. You know, and I was like, I have nothing against money. I like money. I like yeah. buying things. I like nice stuff, you know, but whenever I do something for that, which which whenever i do something which goes against my soul yeah the money's never worth it yeah. the the what i get is not worth the thing you know like it's not jeopardizing your soul for something is not what life is about for me right. you know i always regret those decisions and i kind of try to really think about them now before i make them yeah you know we sometimes get stuck in just habitual ways of doing things and mm. and thinking about things. But if you just and we all have this opportunity, just just connect to ourselves. Yeah, we we inevitably know what's right for us in that moment. Like we can guide ourselves at words or, or be yeah. guided by our soul, like you said. Yeah, yeah. But sometimes we can be um, we can make those decisions wrongly because we're scared. Yeah. Sometimes I'm guilty of going, no, I don't think that's right for me. When actually I'm terrified mm. of it. And I don't want to do it because I don't want to be seen as being rubbish or being mm. out of my debt for not good enough, you know, like, and I can make the decisions based on fear. Yeah. Whereas actually, um, when I, when I run towards the things that scare me, yeah. when I actually physically go, yep, that boom, you know, definitely. Sometimes it's a messy path getting there, but I'm always pleased I did. Yeah. You know, I'm always pleased I did it, you know, and it's, um, and um, I've got a few of them going on right now and I'm terrified of them, mm. you know, but I'm like, right, let's do it, you know, because yeah. it's so scary. That's, <laughs> you know, where that's, that's, where exactly. that's where life happens. Exactly. That's where the, you know, the beauty happens in the mess, you yeah, know, like, um, and it's, um, and, um, and that's what's kind of driving me at the moment. I'm trying to run towards more things that scare mm. me. I've got one coming out, which is terrifying, you know, it's just like, okay, let's do it. You know, it's brilliant. You know? And often what scares you is it's, it's the unknown. It's moving towards the unknown, like stepping towards that, frontier between what you do know and what you don't know yeah because we tend to stay stuck in well not stuck we it's easier to stay stuck in your familiar zone 
I think sometimes it's called your comfort zone, but I think familiar yeah. zone might be a better way to That's a much better way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. completely. Because sometimes being in your comfort zone ain't very comfortable. So no, not, yeah, no, exactly. It's, um, it's just what you do. Familiar zone. It's you easy. know, familiar. Yeah, yeah. So what is this uh, scary thing that you're moving I'm, towards? Well, I'm kind of moving into a bit more kind of like looking into addiction and kind of like really mm. kind of going into that kind of world. Hmm. And um. And it feeds into this thing like, who are you to talk about this? Yeah. You're not a doctor. You don't yeah. know anything, you know, all this kind of stuff. And I'm like, but I'm, I'm, I've been through a of lot course. of it, you know. And actually what's driving me is just just the thirst for knowledge. Mm. Like I really love it and I really want to know more about it. Mm -hmm. And the more I see, the more I read, the more I hear, there's so much out there from so many different yeah. people now that I think, um, and unless you're, in a certain place, you don't get to see those things. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, unless yeah. you're in a certain place in your life when, but I'm like, if I could have told myself this eight years ago, yeah. which I've just read, that would have made such a difference to me then, yeah. you know, but I didn't hear it till now when necessarily I'm in a much better place. But if I told myself then, that could have made a real difference. Yeah. I'm like, why, where's the middleman? here between yeah, these sure. experts and the person on the street you for know sure. where's the middleman like we need to kind of get this information out there and that's the you important know. thing i mean experts obviously i mean mm. experts know a lot about subject matter certain subject matter and but what what will truly connect with people the human mm. stories yeah and if you can bridge that gap between um expert um what's we're looking for like um reductionist expert um theories and so on yeah. which are not going to connect but be that middle man that tells the human story and brings yeah, it yeah. to people like that yeah. there's some power in that yeah i think there's power in that and i think um um yeah i'm really excited about it like i really love that kind of world mm. i kind of love and also i don't really understand everything i'm hearing sure you know, so i'm like right how do i you know so i need to learn more i need to get more yeah. knowledge i need to get this i need to talk to that person i need to go you know which is all exciting and fun yeah so you're talking about learning more, and clearly you are someone that loves to learn. Mm. Uh, you mentioned Matthew McConaughey's book. Are there any other books or teachings or people that have been quite inspirational for you or that you've learned a lot from? Um, at the moment, um, Dr. Gabba Mate has, yep. been, um, has been huge. Yeah. Like I, I, I read a couple of his books now, and, um, and he's been, um, if you don't know who he is just search his name on youtube yeah. his videos and like the stuff he will tell brilliant. you will blow your mind you know you're like i mean you obviously know who he is but then there's people out there who don't and i think mm. i think um and he's one of those people that is kind of like voldemort in certain rooms you can't talk about you know because he's got different ideas to everyone else but what he speaks about speaks to me mm. you know and what he says is so powerful to me you know yeah. I'm like it makes sense to me <laughs> and i'm one of these people you know so i'm like he's um he's truly um a really powerful force in, mm. in these worlds you know in, in a lot of different places right now his head's in a lot of different games you know yeah. but, um, but he's um he's incredible i think um um do you know how else i really i really love hugh jackman like I yeah. find him like um, a very different scale, a very <laughs> different um, sideways step. But he's um, he's someone I could listen to for days. You know, like I search everything he does, yeah. I've searched every interview he's done. You know, like um, I find his his mindset and the way he approaches things and the way he talks about life so mm. interesting and kind of um, and powerful and 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 um. And he's just got something about him which I which I really admire. Yeah, yeah. You know? he's a. I mean, and I use this word in the in the best sense. He's a, he seems to be a very positive. Man. Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely. And he, you know, and he's been through some stuff. You yeah, know, exactly. like um, you know, and he's um, and um, and whenever he talks about, he also gives me hope. Like he really gives me hope. Yeah, you know, because you know when you think about what, um sometimes this this ideas above your station thing can really eat away mm. at me mm. yeah i'm like what are you do don't think that you can't go there you can't do that you can't go to this audition you can't do that then i hear hugh jackman talk and i'm like yeah i can <laughs> yeah i can <laughs> you know like why not you know like i'm, I'm gonna you know like he's just really he really inspires me in some yeah. ways brilliant mm. so i mean you've clearly been through a journey mm. and it's that journey that's given you everything that you're now bringing forth into the world um 
and you may already have mentioned it with your interest in in addiction mm. and being a, a voice within that space. But if you were to project forward ten years, let's say, and you're continuing to be led by your soul and moving towards the unknown and challenging yourself, like do you have any sense of what that next ten years could look like, or what what your life would look like in ten years? What you might be doing in the world, or is it is that is that I have an blurry idea. a question? You do have an idea, okay? I have an idea, which is a pretty hefty goal. Yeah, I'd love to hear you it. You know, and um, and it's something about um, like. I, I read a book by um, a guy called Yohimi Harry who um, talks about addiction and kind of where like um, um, pretty much just about the drug war and kind of what that did for the, the state of um, addiction and, and drug abuse in the yeah. world you know, and yeah. kind of what that actually was about and it kind of really opened my eyes to it and he talked about something called Rat Park which mm. was an experiment that some scientists did in the 60s they put um, um, a rat in a cage and they gave them two water bottles oh. did you hear about this study? Yeah. And basically they gave them two water bottles and one of them had heroin in them, one of them had water, and then they did the same study with cocaine. And they put the rat in the cage and every time the rat went to the heroin, went to the cocaine, overdosed and died every single time. So they were like, heroin and cocaine, the most addictive substances on earth, everyone will become addicted to this. If you try it, you will become addicted and die. And then another guy went, wait a sec, you, you took a rat, away from its life and its family you mm. put it in soul confinement on its own in just a little cage and you gave it a way out you know like who are, who wouldn't to take that way out you know like um like if, if if your life is completely and utterly miserable and you've got something which mm. takes the pain away why wouldn't you do that? So they did the same experiment where they put the same water bottles up in each station, but they built something called Rat Park, which is a room, huge room. They put loads of rats in, so the rats had rats to have sex with, to be friends with. They put little balls so they could play games. They had great food. They had a great, uh, what, enough food for them to live. You know, they had everything set out for them, and the same water bottles were at every water station. No rat died, no rat overdosed. Hmm. no rat occasionally the rats would go to that thing occasionally like and they do it yeah and they might not go back for months or they might never go back but it was always there and no rat died no hmm. rats so they were like and that's what i'm getting back to about connection i'm like they gave these rats a life which was meant for them yeah you know i'm like that's there's something really magical in that and i'm like what if we could you know build say a farm Right, and we could build a farm that produces um, food, right? And but it's also a rehab center. So mm. we bring people in off the streets. We bring people in with with serious drug issues. We give them a sense of community. We give them rehabilitation. We give them group therapy. We give them a place to live. We give them money for working at the farm. When they're ready, they can step up and they can work huh. at the farm. They can leave whenever they want, or they can stay there as long as they want, and they can earn enough money to then go and start their own thing, or they can. But we give them a purpose. We give them a direction. We give them connection. Yeah. We give them community. Yeah. You know, and maybe the food that we make goes to um, feeding homeless peoples or shelters or something like that. So we're kind of com we're, we're building something which is for a bigger purpose and a community. So they're part of something bigger than themselves. You know, I think there's something in that, and I think um, if I could, I'd like to build that. I think it's a beautiful vision. I love yeah. it. I really love I'm, it. I'm, I'm, that's, what I'd, that's what I'd love to do. That's what be, hopefully sure. I'll be doing in 10 years. And I love that. I mean, I, I didn't actually know about, about the Rat Park. I just knew about the... The, the, the first experiment. Initial yeah, experience yeah, 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 yeah. That's all we hear. That's all we but hear that's about. amazing. That's, yeah. I mean, that just... It just speaks to this idea of flourishing. Yeah. And, and what human beings need to flourish. Mm. And, you know, flourishing is a twofold thing. There's, there's one aspect where it depends on the agency of the individual. Mm but also the environment that that person exists within. And so like yeah. the question is how can we co-create environments that support the needs and the well-being of, of each other? Yeah. Can, and, and, can, you've, and you've spoken yeah. to the, the key things that need to be yeah. um, addressed or provided for people. But mm. I mean, do you have hope for the world that, that we can co-create those kinds of societies that foster flourishing? I think, we, def I think we definitely can. I mean, yeah. I, I, I think the more like when I first got into recovery, there was limited options and limited mm. knowledge and everything was, you know, like I didn't tell anybody I was 
in recovery. You know, I didn't mention it. Not yeah. because I was ashamed, but because it just, well, I kind of was ashamed. But um, also, I think maybe it was just something that wasn't talked about. It was a secret thing, you know, and like, um, and, you know, it's anonymous for a reason, you know, and it's kind of like, um, and, um, and uh, the longer I've gone on, the the more I think the world is opening up to this fact that there's something in this that yeah. is out of our control and it's getting worse. You know, it's not getting better. Death rates aren't going down from mm -hmm. drug abuse. Like, um, um, le less lives are not being destroyed. <laughs> you know, like it's only getting worse, you know, yeah. like, um, and now we've got, we're finding addictions prop up in the most peculiar places for peculiar things, you know, and I think it's, um, and um, I think, um, that's that gives me real hope that we are coming to a world where actually sure. we're going to be able to address this. Like I remember when Russell Brown went to Parliament and talked about mm -hmm. it, there were so many smarmy remarks about it, and I was like, this guy is doing something absolutely mm -hmm. incredible for society right now. Like he's standing up in front of these people, you know, and and delivering something so eloquently and beautifully, yeah. like, and in such a perfect way, and. It wasn't. It was given respect, but it wasn't given the acknowledgement. Yeah. I think it would have been given right now, mm -hmm. you know. And I think, but because of that, I really do believe that this country has started to spiral into a place where we're going to have to look at this, whether necessarily people want to or not. Yeah. And I think there are solutions and there are ways to deal with it. And I think I have real hope for the future. Amazing, amazing. What? when you you mentioned russell brand there which sort of reinforces this idea but I'll, i i believe that there's like a healthy rebellion that is required and that's why you know the likes of someone like yourself who let's say i'm guessing you have a rebellious spirit and that may have manifested in destructive ways but that same rebellious spirit can be used in constructive ways like you know positive rebellion against the the existing you know structures and mm. and and um conditions in our society that are that are not um providing the you know soul food and the nourishment for our spirits as human beings and, yeah. and a sense of belonging and connection and and self-esteem and the like that helps us to flourish like we almost need to rebel against those re restrictive um conditions that we sort of many people find themselves in but yeah. like but do it with a rebellious spirit does that yeah, connect no, with you in any way absolutely. Do you know what if i mean you think of everything in in the world when it yeah. changes it comes from rebellion yeah exactly you know, like um um everything there there is there is change that happens but it has to be done in a way that people have to stand up and listen yeah you know i think um and i'm not i'm not saying that i'm doing anything like that but i'm i'm, I'm willing to i'm willing to contribute yeah, you know, and I think that's um, that's something which I feel like, if you have something that is in you that you want to change, you know, like if not you, then who? If not yeah. now, then yeah. when? You know, yeah, like, sure. it always comes into my head. You know, like um, I was thinking of it from a Rage Against the Machine song, but like um, mm, yeah, yeah. it's um, like it's it's so true. Like um, like y if you sit down and do nothing, nothing will happen. You know, or maybe someone else might be doing it, but you can yeah. always add to that. Yeah, you know, I think um. You know, I think there's, there's, and I pick my battles very carefully. You know, but um, but if there's ever a chance, I would, I will be in, mm. involved in whichever way I can. It's that uh, often used "be the change" thing, but, yeah. but effectively that. Thank you so much. You've you've shared. Thanks for being so open. First of all, for I've loved it. For bearing your soul, it. as it were. Yeah. Um, are there any things you feel like you haven't said that you would be good for people to hear? Any last messages? Um. I don't know, man. I, I think uh, I think I uh, kind of mentioned it earlier on, but the the I always thought that I never wanted to say too much because mm. you know, like it's like I think it's a very British thing. We don't you don't air your dirty laundry. Yeah, you know, you you kind of keep that behind closed doors, all that kind of stuff. That's not helpful. Mm -mm. That's the most unhelpful thing. Um, I think, um, especially for me, you know, as soon as I was open and yeah. I talked about things. And I asked for help. Um, and if someone can't help you, there, you know, like them, there will be someone who can, you know. And I think, and but unless you ask, unless you put yourself out there, you know, it's very hard for them to reach you. Mm. I think, you know, and mm. and sometimes um, I've had interesting situations where I've said, "Are you okay?" 
you know, yeah. and I've had an answer which I wasn't expecting. Yeah. And that's okay too. Sometimes people are waiting for someone to ask, you know, so um, if you're seeing someone struggling or you see someone or you see something you're worried about, don't think it's going to go away because it probably won't. Mm. You know, like um, reaching out to somebody who's in trouble is a big thing and then reaching out to you is a big mm. thing. So I think sometimes it can go two ways. Yeah, that's really mm. important. Mm. Like, again, it speaks to courage, mm. I think. Yeah. And and also that we connect through our vulnerability. Yeah. So we, we should be courageous and embrace our vulnerability. And, and Absolutely. Through that. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. I've really, thank you, really thank you loved very much. hearing what you had to say. I've had a great chat. Thanks cool. a lot. Cheers, Matt. Cheers, mate. Thanks for listening. We'll be back next week with another episode and another brilliant guest. Flourish is a podcast from Unmind, a mental health platform transforming the world of workplace well-being. To find out more, visit unmind.com or follow us on socials at unmindhq. You can also find me, your host, on Instagram at steve at unmind. See you next time.